Africa is home to many successful and large companies. Zooming into the East African region, the list of top companies is dominated by Kenyan companies. And at the top of that list is Safaricom PLC. Safaricom is the leading mobile network provider in Kenya and one of the most profitable companies in the East and Central Africa region. With a market value exceeding 500 billion Kenya shillings as of September 2023, the company proudly claims its place among the top 15 largest companies on the African continent. Founded 26 years ago, Safaricom has not only evolved into a tech and communication powerhouse, but has also pioneered a financial revolution with its iconic mobile money service, M-Pesa. This service is often hailed as revolutionary and has touched the lives of millions, reshaping the way people manage their finances in Kenya and beyond. Safaricom's journey to success can be attributed to innovative products and services, a strong brand and reputation, and its efficient operations and management. And with a market share of over 66% in Kenya, its dominance has attracted both admiration and concerns. But how did Safaricom ascend to these heights? In this series, we explore the journey of Safaricom as a company, from its inception and early days, to the leadership and CEOs, to the innovation, the competition and the controversial dominance in the market. Along the way, we will delve into Safaricom's numbers and make sense of it all. And of course, we shine a spotlight on the groundbreaking mobile service, M-Pesa, a driving force behind Safaricom's unrivaled success. This is the captivating story of Safaricom. The origins of Safaricom can be traced back to the 1990s when it was a subsidiary of the Kenya Post and Telecommunication Corporation. KPTC was the sole telecommunications operator in Kenya and was fully owned by the government. Safaricom was established in 1998 under KPTC. However, in 1999, KPTC was split into three entities, one of which was Telcom Kenya, which took over Safaricom. The name Safaricom was chosen to reflect the tourism culture of Kenya. This is according to Joseph Ogutu, who is the current chairman of Safaricom Foundation and one of the team members who came up with the name. He said, and I quote, We thought, what is this country known for? Kenya is known for safaris. Tourists visit for safaris and local people also enjoy them. And so the name we gave our company was a mix of safari and communication. Safaricom. In 1999, Safaricom received a license to operate a mobile network in Kenya. It started off with 12,000 subscribers it inherited from KPTC. A year later in 2000, Vodafone PLC UK bought 40% stake in Telcom Kenya, leaving the government with 60%. Michael Joseph was appointed as the first CEO of Safaricom and the company was officially launched to begin its commercial operations. It focused on providing affordable and reliable mobile services to Kenyans. Today, Safaricom remains one of the most successful and profitable companies in Africa with a market value of over $5 billion. It has two major shareholders, Vodafone Kenya Limited, which owns 39%, and the Government of Kenya, which owns 35%. Vodafone Kenya Limited is a subsidiary of Vodacom Group Limited, a South African company. According to its annual report, Safaricom made a profit of 52.5 billion from serving 43.7 million customers with diverse products and services. We will analyze these numbers in more detail in part 2 of this series. So how did Safaricom grow from 12,000 subscribers in 1999 to 33 million in 2023? If you are enjoying the episode so far, please consider subscribing to the channel to support our work. Safaricom was started in 1997 as a subsidiary of Telcom Kenya, formerly KPTC. In 1999, Safaricom received a license to operate a mobile network in Kenya. In October of 2000, Safaricom was officially launched into the Kenyan market. Vodafone PLC bought a 40% stake of Telcom Kenya. Michael Joseph was appointed as the first CEO of Safaricom. The company faced its first competition from Kensel, 
another mobile network operator launched just a few months before Safaricom. Kencel had an early advantage as it had more network coverage and better quality of service than Safaricom. Kencel also had a more aggressive marketing strategy using celebrities to promote its brand. Safaricom, on the other hand, focused on providing affordable and reliable services to the masses, especially in rural areas. It also introduced innovative products and services such as prepaid calling and value-added services. In just five years, Safaricom had overtaken Kencel as the market leader. In 2001, Safaricom became the first operator to introduce per second billing in the market. Before per second billing, making a call meant that you were charged for the entire minute even if your call lasted for just a few seconds. In the same year, Safaricom launched the 0722 prefix. It also expanded its network coverage and reached 300,000 subscribers. In 2002, Safaricom introduced the 100 shilling scratch card and passed 700,000 new subscribers. In 2003, Safaricom hit 1 million subscribers and launched Simu Ya Jami, a phone service for the public that enabled low-income customers to access mobile phones. It marked Safaricom's customer-centric approach and its goal to transform lives for as many Kenyans as possible. Simuya Jami means community phone in Swahili and it allowed people to make and receive calls using a shared handset and a prepaid SIM card. The service was popular among low-income earners, students and small businesses who could not afford to buy their own mobile phones or pay the higher tariffs. Simuya Jami also created employment opportunities for many Kenyans who operated the service as agents or vendors. In 2004, Safaricom launched a mobile internet called Edge. It was the first of its kind in the country and it enabled Kenyans to browse the internet and access other basic online services. Mobile internet was a major milestone for Safaricom as it increased its customer base, revenue and market share. It also contributed to the development of e-commerce, education, health and entertainment sectors in Kenya. In the year 2004, Safaricom sees its status as a subsidiary of Telcom Kenya. It became a public company with the government of Kenya owning 60% and the Vodafone company owning 40%. This was a significant milestone for Safaricom as it allowed it to grow its customer base, revenue and market share more flexibly. At this time, the profit mark for the company had hit the 5 billion shilling mark. In 2005, Safaricom launched two popular services. Sambaza and Flashback. Sambaza allowed customers to share airtime. Flashback, which is commonly known as Please Call Me, allows subscribers to request for calls. In 2006, Safaricom moved to its new cooperative headquarters along Waiyakiwe in Nairobi. Their market share by this time had reached over 60%, becoming the leading operator in the country ahead of Kensel. In 2007, Safaricom introduced M-Pesa a groundbreaking mobile phone money transfer service. M-Pesa was a pioneer in the region, completely transforming how Kenyans access and handle their money. It has since expanded to other countries in Africa and Asia. More about M-Pesa in part 2 of this series on the story of Safaricom. Also in 2007, Safaricom introduced 3G to the market, which had now reached 6 million subscribers. In 2008, Safaricom reached 10 million subscribers and conducted its IPO, Initial Public Offering. During an IPO, a company offers its shares to the public for the first time, allowing individual and institutional investors to become shareholders in the company. An IPO is a pivotal moment in the life of a company, especially for one as influential as Safaricom. The Kenyan government, initially holding a 60% stake in Safaricom, made 25% of the company available to the public through the IPO, reducing its ownership to 35%. At that time, Safaricom was facing competition from Orange, U, and Zane, which was formerly known as Celtel. In the following year, in 2009, Safaricom launched the 5 and 10 shilling scratch cards the lowest in the market. Traditional airtime vouchers were often sold in higher denominations, making it challenging for some individuals to afford mobile services regularly. Safaricom's decision to launch the cheaper scratch card was a strategic move to address the affordability gap. A broader segment of the population was able to access and enjoy mobile services. 
In 2010, Bob Colimo was appointed the new CEO of Safaricom. The company's profits soared, crossing the 20 billion shillings mark. Safaricom was on an upward trajectory, steadily growing its market share from 60% just four years prior to an impressive 78%. Meanwhile, its main competitor Zain was acquired by Airtel in that year. In 2011, Safaricom triggered a price war in the market when they slashed internet prices drastically. Their subscribers increased to 17 million but the market share dipped to 68% down by 10% from the previous year. Also in 2011, Safaricom took a leading role in the Kenya's for Kenya initiative. They spearheaded a coalition of partners in the fundraising campaign to mitigate the devastating famine situation in northern Kenya. This crisis was prompted by the worst drought in over a half a century, leaving millions of Kenya vulnerable to starvation and malnutrition. Safaricom used its M-Pesa platform, enabling contributions as low as 10 shillings without transaction fees. This collective effort raised over 677 million Kenya shillings in cash and nearly 300 million shillings in form of goods, services, or assets. It was a historic endeavor in Kenyan history. 2012 was marked by another revolutionary move. Safaricom partnered with NCBA Bank to launch Mshwari, another mobile banking service. Mshwari made it possible for millions of Kenyans to save, earn interest and borrow money, all from the convenience of a mobile phone. In 2013, Lipa na Mpesa was introduced, paving way for cashless payments and laying foundation for e-commerce in Kenya. 2014 witnessed a technological leap as Safaricom rolled out Kenya's first 4G network connectivity for mobile devices. In the same year, the government entrusted Safaricom with the National Security Surveillance Project. This was a mission to enhance security by deploying advanced technology and communication systems. This ambitious project with a budget of 15 billion shillings aimed to enhance security in Nairobi and Mombasa. It featured four key components: video surveillance, video conferencing, digital radios, and a central command hub. Safaricom deployed 1800 cameras across Nairobi and Mombasa, some with the ability to detect vehicle license plates and infrared capabilities. The initiative garnered public support but also raised concern about privacy and transparency in the tender process. In 2015, Safaricom, in collaboration with its partners, unveiled MT by introducing the concept of a mobile health wallet. This innovation not only improved access to healthcare services but also expanded the capabilities of M-Pesa. In the same period, Safaricom allowed M-Pesa customers to send and receive money from Rwanda, opening doors to e-commerce opportunities across Eastern Africa. The company also introduced KCB M-Pesa, enabling users to save, access loans, and perform more financial transactions conveniently from their mobile phones. In 2016, Safaricom connected more than 140,000 homes with Safaricom Home, a home Wi-Fi system. The year also witnessed the launch of My Safaricom app, centralizing Safaricom and M-Pesa function for millions of users. 2017 marked another technological milestone as Safaricom introduced 4G+, doubling browsing speeds for customers. The subscriber base grew to 28 million, securing a commanding 71% market share. During this period, the company transitioned to the Tuaweza slogan from Nikona Safaricom. With a 29 million subscriber base in 2018, Safaricom launched M-Pesa Global, allowing anyone in the world to send money to any M-Pesa customer in Kenya. Additionally, the market value of Safaricom hit the 1 trillion shilling mark. In 2019, Safaricom partnered up with AliExpress to enable M-Pesa payments for online transactions. It also celebrated 30 million customers across the country. The company also introduced reverse call feature allowing callers to transfer the cost of the call to the responder. However, the year was also marked by a somber note with the untimely passing of then CEO Bob Colimo in July. Following this loss, Michael Joseph, the former CEO, took on the role of interim CEO. This transition and more about the CEOs will be explored later in this episode. The year 2020 was the year of the coronavirus pandemic. Safaricom played a critical role in connecting people and providing donations to help combat the pandemic. The company reduced some transaction fees and also provided a free toll line. 
the company also welcomed the third CEO, Peter Ndegwa. Also in 2020, Safaricom introduced Zuri, its artificial intelligence chatbot assistant to WhatsApp, creating a new way to speak to its customers. In 2021, Safaricom also started its 5G network trials in Kenya. In 2022, Safaricom became the first provider to announce the commercial launch of 5G services. It also crossed a milestone with 30 million monthly active Mpesa customers. The company also officially launched Safaricom Telecommunications Ethiopia PLC, investing in Ethiopia's digital future. Now, in 2023, Safaricom stands strong with 33 million subscribers, commanding a 66% market share and reporting a profit of 52 billion shillings. This journey highlights Safaricom's strong leadership success in the telecommunications industry, showing their consistency and impact on Kenya over the years. But Safaricom's remarkable journey has been marked not only by its achievements but also by moments of scrutiny and legal challenges. Let's take a closer look at some notable instances. In 2023, Safaricom and partners faced a 305 billion lawsuit over their Fuliza overdraft service, accused of violating financial and regulations and engaging in exploitive lending practices. In 2022, a class action lawsuit emerged over SIM swap fraud alleging negligence in safeguarding subscribers accounts. In 2019, Safaricom was investigated by the Competition Authority of Kenya, that is CAK, over allegations of abusing its dominant position in the mobile money market. These instances reflect how Safaricom's operation has faced scrutiny, legal action, and regulatory responses. It's essential to consider these challenges alongside the company's achievement to gain a comprehensive understanding of its role in the telecommunications landscape. Despite the challenges it has faced, Safaricom remains a significant contributor to the economic development of East Africa. How does it navigate these obstacles and maintain its leading position? The answer lies in the vision and strategies of its top executives who have molded the company's culture and values. In this last segment of part 1, we will explore the leadership styles and achievements of Safaricom's influential CEOs from Michael Joseph to Peter Ndegwa. Michael Joseph was the founding CEO of Safaricom, who led the company from its inception in 2000 to its listing on the Nairobi Stock Exchange in 2008. He is credited with pioneering M-Pesa, the world's most successful mobile money service. He also established Safaricom as a market leader in Kenya. Joseph's leadership style was described as visionary and hands-on, prioritizing customer satisfaction and innovation. During his tenure, he tackled challenges such as regulatory uncertainty and political interference. His solutions involved expanding the network, diversifying services, and nurturing a strong corporate culture. Joseph also seized opportunities by introducing services like Sambaza, Bonga Points, and Skiza Tunes. Although he stepped down in 2010, he returned as interim CEO in 2019 after Bob Collymore's passing, later serving as an independent non-executive director on the board. Bob Collymore was the second CEO of Safaricom after Michael Joseph. He continued to build on the legacy of his predecessor by expanding M-Pesa into a platform for financial inclusion, e-commerce, and social impact. He also led Safaricom into new markets such as home internet, cloud computing, and digital TV. His leadership style was described as consultative, collaborative, and empathetic, with a focus on employee engagement and social responsibility. Challenges during his tenure included a price war, regulatory challenges affecting revenue, and concerns about market dominance. Colimo addressed this by enhancing customer loyalty, improving efficiency, and advocating for fair competition. He also introduced new services like Mshwari, Lipa na Mpesa, Mtiba, and Fuliza. Kolimo passed away in 2019, leaving a legacy of transformational leadership and social impact. Peter Ndegwa is the current and third CEO of Safaricom who took over from Michael Joseph in 2020. He is the first Kenyan to hold the position having previously worked in various markets across Africa and Europe. He joined Safaricom during the challenging COVID-19 pandemic. Ndegwa's leadership style is described as purpose-driven and inclusive with a focus on using technology to transform lives. 
He faces the challenges that include maintaining market leadership, navigating regulatory and political landscapes, and meeting shareholder expectations. Dego has invested in network quality, customer experience, and innovation. He's realigning the organizational culture to support the strategy and pursuing growth opportunities both locally and regionally. Dego has launched Safaricom's 5G network and is leading the company's expansion into Ethiopia, a strategic move to extend its presence in Africa. Safaricom's journey has been steered by a succession of diverse CEOs, each leaving their unique mark on the company's remarkable story of success. These leaders have not only navigated challenges, but have also harnessed opportunities. They've shown remarkable adaptability as they've led one of Africa's most prominent companies. As we conclude this chapter of Safaricom's evolution, we invite you to stay tuned for part two, where we will delve deeper into its innovations, M-Pesa, and the exciting prospects that lie ahead. Don't miss the next installment of the story of Safaricom. Subscribe now and turn on that bell to never miss an episode. Thank you for watching.